Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for clarity of your truth. Holy Spirit, we depend on you to guide us into every truth we need today. Thank you because burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed in the life of everyone watching right now. And you are opening up, Lord, your good treasure to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now I've been talking to you about God's financial system. And we've been looking at Luke, sorry, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19. And Jesus is saying, don't lay up treasure for yourselves here on earth. Now yesterday I took you to, to the book of Luke. 6 where Jesus said Luke 6 33 where Jesus said hey sell what you have and give arms I'm telling you how do you deposit your money in heaven how do you open up an account in heaven how do you operate an account in heaven Jesus told us the reason he's telling us to lay up our treasure in heaven is so that nothing will happen to your resources nothing will happen to your finances and then I showed you how Jesus yesterday, how Jesus told our rich young ruler, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. Now that's how you open, you, you lay up your treasure in heaven. When you give. So yesterday we're looking at Galatians chapter 6. Turn your Bibles there right now. That's where we're going to start today. Galatians chapter 6. And verse 8. Oh, let me start from verse 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will reap also. Whatever a man sows, that he will reap also. So, first of all, there must be the sowing before you talk about the reaping. Are you getting it now? Now, look at the next verse. The next verse says, For he who sows to the his flesh remember now jesus in luke 6 38 jesus made reference to what paul actually was saying or paul maybe was making reference to jesus jesus made a very powerful statement it says give luke 6 38 says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaking together running over shall men give unto your bosom then jesus said for with the same measure you meet out it shall be measured back to you now I, I need you to follow me carefully now with the same measure you meet out it shall be measured back to you so the same way you give now when we say the same measure people just think he's talking about amount so if you give 200 naira you will receive multiples of 200 naira Yes, even though that is true, because whatever you give, when he gives you back, is more than what you give, what you give. Now then, but it also, the way and manner you give is a measure. You need to understand this. Your attitude of giving is a measure. That's why 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, now 2 Corinthians, he told us, now listen, don't grumble when you give. Because if you give grumbling, you will reap also grumbling. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now here he says, that's exactly what he's saying. He says, so he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. Now how do you sow to the flesh? When your giving is sensory is sense ruled. When you're giving, is because of what you can see. You know, I like that pastor. I like the way that pastor preaches. So I will be giving him my tithes. Oh, I love that man. That man, he 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 takes care of the widows. I think that is the person that I'll be giving my money to. No matter how sincere your heart is. It is as a result of what you saw with the eyes or what you sensed with your mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that giving was of the flesh. Now what it is says is when you give like that, 
you are going to reap corruption. Now, what does it mean, reap corruption? It's very simple. You see, many times the problem is not our giving. And Satan hardly attacks our giving. Yeah, Satan hardly attacks our giving. What Satan is always after is our receiving. Because the giving is not the testimony, even though the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. But the giving is not the testimony. The testimony is in the receiving. Anybody can give. You can give willingly. It can be stolen from you. You can also convert that to a giving. I've taught you that before. Someone can cajole you and collect everything you have. It's part of giving. See? You lose your stuff to the bank. It's part of giving. So giving means something leaving you. Now he's telling you that, hey, be careful not to give in the flesh. Be careful not to give by your senses. Because if you give by your senses, what you're going to reap from that is corruption. Nothing good from it. But then there is another kind of giving. He says, but he who sows to the Spirit. How do you sow to the Spirit? When you depend on the Holy Spirit to guide your giving. Not giving because someone else did it. You know, sometimes people make that mistake. You know, someone comes to share a testimony and say, Ah, brethren, last month God told me to give my whole salary. And I gave my whole salary. And in two days, see what happened to me. See the miracles that happened to me. And someone's listening and say, Wow, I think I know what next thing to give now. When I collect my salary this month, I'm giving my whole salary. And then he gives his whole salary and he doesn't get any results. And he's wondering, hmm, hmm. And then the next he starts saying that maybe that guy that shared that testimony didn't tell us the truth. You didn't hear what he heard. It's as simple as that. He gave in the spirit. I want you to catch this now. He gave by the spirit. So the spirit of God told him, give your whole salary. And then he said, yes, sir. You didn't hear the spirit of God command you to do that. You saw him do it. And you did the same thing because you saw him do it. You gave in the flesh. He gave in the spirit. So he, while he reaped everlasting life, you reaped corruption. Because you reaped bills and, and trouble. See? Did God reject my giving? No, you see, that's why I told you. It's, the problem is not the giving. The problem is in the receiving. If you are not convinced in your heart that God has received your giving, you will have a challenge standing in faith to receive from God. Did you hear me? So that's why I tell you, look, even when you bring your tithe before the Lord, take it to, the, take it to Him and ask Him, Lord, you've blessed me and I'll bring your tithe to you. Can you direct me on what I should do with it? The moment he tells you what to do with it and you obey him, you know that he has received it. Now, when you know that he has received it, it's so easy for you to stay in that place of your receiving by faith. It's like you sending someone to the bank to pay in some money for you. And the person calls you and says, I've paid in the money. So you have? He said, yes. Sure you have? Yes, I have. And then you don't receive the alert. And then after a while, you say, let me check my account. You check your account. You don't see the credit in your account. You don't see that amount in your account. Now, what are you going to do? The first thing you want to do is, hey, are you sure you paid in that money? Because I have not seen, received any alerts. I say, oh, yes, I paid it. Are you sure? Did they give you a teller? See, that's what, what are you asking for? Was there a confirmation from the bank that such money was received? You want to be sure. If you are not sure about that, then your faith for your claims will be weak. Because when you get to the bank and say, look, I'm supposed to have this amount of money in my account, but this is what I'm seeing. And I said, when did you make that deposit? I made it on social time. And then the check is not there. Sorry, did you make that deposit yourself? Um, I actually sent somebody. Oh, wow. Maybe the person did not pay in the money. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? And then now you're thrown into doubt because the truth is you didn't pay in that money yourself. 
So you've got to depend on that person, hoping he's telling the truth. Now, when you send someone to the bank, and then he comes back to you with a stamped teller, that that money has been received by the bank. Now, you've got your evidence that your money is in the bank. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's what the same thing I'm saying. When you give in the spirit, you've got to have your evidence that your money was received. That is how you know you can beat your chest. That's your teller. When the Lord tells you, give to so so and so person. And sometimes when he tells you like that, you, you make that call. Say, hey, how are you? Say, oh, I'm very fine, brother. I've actually been thinking of calling you. So why? I'm in this terrible need. That, in fact, I think you're the only one that can save me. So really, how much is it? This is exactly how much I need. And then it just happens that it's almost or exactly the same money that the Lord has commanded you to give to the person. Or sometimes you give it already. And then you get the call and say, man, how did you come about sending me that money? Oh, the Lord commanded me to send. Wow. That means truly you hear God. Why do you say that? Because I'm in this exact need. And when that money came in, it cleared that need for me. So you just know that you hear God indeed. And then you are happy. Praise God. Now what's that? That's a confirmation that heaven has received your money that's your credit alert in your heavenly bank account every time you are convinced that your money has been received in heaven you know that you've done some transfers into your heavenly account i'm telling you the surest way to do it that's why i tell i tell people i say look you don't wait till you get to church before you give your offering you give your offering at home before you get to church Church is just a collecting point. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So you, you are going to service and you take out that offering. Why you are preparing? You know, some people don't know the, the, you, you ought to do, to do this. You ought to prepare for the service. You say, but I'm not the preacher and I'm going just going. You see, that's the thing. Your level of preparation will determine the kind of release that, will, that there will be in that service. If you walk into, as a preacher, if you walk into a service where people are not prepared, you will sense it. You will sense the weakness, the the, the coldness in the atmosphere. You will sense it. But when you walk into a place that is charged, a place where you have praying people, a place where you have people who have come to receive from that service, you will know. Because you will just see and sense utterance. You will just sense virtue leaving you. I mean, you, you just know that, no, these people are really prepared. Praise God. That's how it works. So you want to be ever sure. (coughs) That your money has been received in heaven. You want to be convinced about that. It's something you need to be sure. I'm telling you this so that, you see, because the next point we're going to be talking about is how to withdraw from your heavenly account. That account is not for the sweet buy but that account is for you to use today and now. In fact, the earlier you start operating with confidence from that account, the better for you. But first of all, you need to be sure that your money is in heaven. You need to be sure that you have treasure in heaven. And Jesus told us when you give, You are laying up your treasure in heaven. And I'm sharing with you the surest way to know that you've got credit in heaven is when you hear the voice of God. So here you are preparing for that Sunday service or midweek service, whatever service you're going for. And then then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. I am just set to receive every good thing you have for me in this service. And Lord, you know what? I'm coming to you with an offering. Lord, please accept my offering today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes when you're praying like that, the Lord can even tell you, hey, I don't want you to give that particular offering. This is the kind of offering I want you to give. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, it has happened to me several times. I'm praying with an offering. And the Lord said, no, 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 son. I want you to give your tithe, this amount of tithe, 
in that place. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And I'll just obey him. See, when I do that, I know my money has been received in heaven. Praise God. Our time is up for today. We are going to continue from here tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.